What's good, everybody? Poppin' here, back with another draft review. VBLS, we're back at it in Generation 9, Season 8. Um, we are here with the first, as far as I can see, the first VGC draft of uh, Scarlet and Violet. This is Series 1, the earliest format possible. So no Paradox Mons, no Ruin Mons, uh, and everything else is legal. So this is the probably the best season we're going to get to really showcase the new Generation 9 Mons. I know I personally made a... a, a, a an effort to try to draft as many of them as possible. I know a lot of other coaches did as well. Uh, so we're going to get talking about it and let's just jump right into it. So, um, before every draft, I usually try to have some kind of idea of what I want to draft. Uh, this time, I just wanted to have fun. <laughs> no tryharding this season. I, uh, I did well enough last season where I don't have a chip on my shoulder anymore. So, well, I say that now. We'll see how it, how it goes over the course of the season. But, um, I was trying to just have a good time and prioritize picking mods that I just really want to draft. Uh, there's still some things from Generation 8 that I never got to draft. I always wanted to try Grimmsnarl. I never had the chance to. Um, I always wanted to give Cinderace a shot. That didn't pan out either. So I wanted to try to go ahead and pick what I want and just build around that. So team won't be perfect, obviously. No team ever is. Um, but as long as I can have a team that is fun to play, that's really all I can ask for. Uh, another thing is I just wanted to be able to use Terrasilize well. Um, <laughs> these weird new gen mechanics are always tough to figure out, especially on the first go round. so I'm not expecting to do overly well with it. So being able to pick mons that use it in different ways, some offensive ones, some maybe some mons where they double up on their uh, stab types already, I just wanted to have fun with it. Um, I'm also trying not to worry too much about my type chart because you can always fix that. If you can change your type into anything, there's never there's never a hole in your type chart. And the last thing was just that I wanted to keep in mind the uh, the list over here of what is good in attacking because I, I like to deal damage, right? That's the that's the fun of Pokemon. Clicking number clicking moves and watching uh, big numbers show up in the bar go down. Um, but I did want to note that this was a really limited format for a couple types. Every format's going to have the types that are more common than not. And this one has an absolute just... Uh, it has just an, a trench where the fairies, grounds, and grasses should normally be. Um, like, the only good fairy types that are value were Tinkaton. Garchomp is, like, the only ground type besides maybe Dawn Fan. And I could only think of three good grass types. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I think Meowskarada is probably the best grass type in the game. <laughs> and partly because it doesn't have to be a grass type. So, anyways... Those are my kind of general ideas in the draft. Um, what did I start with? I started with the Golden Goat. I was pick 11 out of 12, and this thing somehow came down to me. So, I had to grab it. But one thing I do want to point out is I have my little base stats up here. Uh, I'm not using HP, Defense, and Special Defense. I think those are kind of nebulous numbers. So I'm using Attack, Effective Defense, Special Attack, Effective Special Defense, Speed, and then the Effective Base for that total. So, effective defense and effective special defense, like I've talked about in the, the last video I put up, kind of a draft primer for Scarlet and Violet. These are essentially what this Pokemon's defensive stats would be if its base HP were 80. So, for Golden Go, it's already pretty close to base 80, so the effective defense and effective special defense aren't uh, too far off from what the actual defense and special defense are. So, this just, go, this just puts it into a better perspective of how much, like, how well this model take hits from either side without having to worry about like, oh, uh, so Titan has 170 HP, but its defense is 50. How bulky is it actually? I don't know. If you go off to effective defense and effective spadef, it clears all that up. So, just clearing that up. So, uh, Golden Go. This thing is a fucking beast. I played a lot of singles in Scarlet and Violet so far. I haven't played too much on the doubles ladder, honestly, uh, but I don't play much on the, <laughs> on the doubles ladder in any generation. I kind of a uh, doubles only in draft league kind of guy. <laughs> But I played enough of this thing in singles to kind of totally sell me on it. It has such good stats with such a good typing, where it doesn't even need to rely on terrestrialization, but it can make great use of it. So, uh, this thing has the bonkers special attacks that have 133, which is in the 97th percentile. It's like, I think there's like five mods that have more than that. Um, but none of them have a fucking 120 base power stab spread move. <laughs> so... Uh, I'm going to be bringing the rake, make it rain and bringing the pain each week. I also get money after the battle, which is kind of a, a nice side effect of that. Really helps out when you do best of three, you get a triple the payout. 
Um, so Golden Go has pretty much everything going for it, it could ever want. Uh, great stats. It has an effect. I think this is the highest effective base stat total on my team, 479. It seems low, but when you take out an entire stat, the average of a good mon is like 500. Um, so Golden Go is really great. It can do anything it needs to. Good as gold is such a busted ability. It, it really lets it kind of flex in uh, move slots when it needs to. I can run attacking moves, but I can also run Trick, Thunder Wave, Dual Screens, anything like that. I can run Nasty Plot. I can run... Uh, a stall set with like recovering a boosting move it's so good it can do pretty much anything it wants and it's kind of made a name for itself in the series i've seen on, like online so far and just the initial tournaments this thing is top one top two in usage and i think that's for good reason even though it doesn't have the crazy move pool that some of these other mons do uh kind of got like gen 8 gen 9 syndrome where it has just enough to make it not broken despite everything else being broken being balanced by the move pool so uh, i think golden go is going to put in a lot of work for me this season so since I was number 11, I had to wait two more picks and then it came right back to me. I wanted to get Murkrow, didn't happen. Your boy went right after me and picked Garchomp Murkrow. That was, both of those two were mons that I wanted and they were gone immediately. So I went for something that was, I thought, giga value. This thing cost three points and I, I specifically call this out in my little prep video as something that I thought would be super good value if it was anything below five. And three is crazy. Look at this. 115 attack, 90 speed, that's pretty good for 3 points. Uh, 115 attack is in the top 75 percentile. Scrappy makes it immune to uh, Intimidate. Intimidate is, weak, is, is like weaker than it's ever been, but just not having to even worry about running clear amulet or anything like that. Fighting flying is almost unresisted um, if, you, if you do run Scrappy. Or, I can also just run Co-Star. You have to prep for both of those anytime you're considering Flamigo coming to the match, because if you prep for one and not the other, if it shows up with the other ability, it it's, it's a totally different beast, and you have to prep for it completely differently. It also offers a lot of interesting utility. Tailwind, Taunt, Faint, which is a super big move, and I think might be really important this, uh, this season. It has Quick and Wide Guard, and also U-Turn, just for pivoting if it needs to. Uh, U-Turn could really help out if, uh, if I'm running a co-star set. If I don't get my boost, I can always switch out, deal damage, and get that nice little uh, pivot option in there, so... I think Flamigo is a really great option, a really great pick. Round two might be really early, but I can't guarantee this thing was going back. Like, Tinkaton got picked first pick of the draft. Uh, five point Mon going immediately when there was stuff like Garchomp on the board. It was kind of wild, so I didn't want this thing to get snatched from me because I, like I said, I like Flamigo. I want to give it a shot. I think it has a lot of value. And I mean, I, what kind of fraud would I be if I talked, if I talked it up in my little draft review video and I didn't even pick it? So I kind of had to pick Flamigo. Uh, coming back around, a long time passed, and I was thinking, you know, I got Flamigo, that thing's going to be great. I want to pick another mod that I'm going to have fun with. So, this this is Big Garg. Garganachi. Such a huge beast of a mod. Uh, if you watched my stuff last season, you will saw you'll you will have seen that Appleton and Orbeetle kind of were uh, body press machines for me. And they walked so Garganacle could run. This thing is fucking crazy. This is the ultimate body press mon. It can be better. It can be Registeel if it wants to, but it can be even better Registeel if it runs uh, Purifying Salt. Can't get burned. Get a nice Ghost resistance for some reason. <laughs> Super cool stuff. So typically, when you see Garganacle uh, either in singles or doubles ladder, it's going to be running some kind of uh, Iron Defense body press stuff, which is great. But it doesn't have to just do that. Uh, in Draft League, where you see maybe there's an opportunity for it to deal some serious damage with Stone Edge and Rock Slide, you can just straight up put it all into attack. It can be a Choice Man mod. It can do lots of damage off that kind of attack stat. Ideally, you do want to get, you do want to find it in a place where you can do the kind of body press stuff. I mean, look at that effective defense. That's 95th percentile. That's crazy. This thing is so hard to break. It's a good defense stat and a good HP stat, leading to incredible defenses. So. It can pretty much do whatever you want it to do, as long as you don't want it to go fast. Anything slow, Garganacle's your guy. But I think this was a, uh, a really fun pick. I really like Monster that are flexible. It kind of reminds me of Regirock, which is a pet favorite mod of mine. It, it can uh, <laughs> essentially do the same thing, um, but it's a little bit slower. It doesn't quite get the same moves that it does. But, you know, I think Purifying Salt is way better of an ability than Clear Body. And Clear Body is a great ability, so that's just speaks volumes to how much I... Uh, in what in the high respect that I hold Garganacle. 
Um, up next, I need a speed control. So, the best speed control left was Talon Flame. I had to pick it. Uh, this was a Mon on Taze team, so the only team that actually took a W for me last season, so... Um, a general strategy is, like, you know, if someone's beating you with a Mon, just take it so they can't use it. So, it's kind of the thought here. It's one point cheaper than Murkrow. Arguable which one's better. Murkrow can obviously run the Aviolite, be way bulkier than Talonflame, but Talonflame's faster. Its, its Tailwind is, like, slightly more priority, assuming it doesn't get faked out or anything like that. Uh, get some other nice utility moves like Brave Bird and Faint. I don't know if Murkrow gets Faint or anything like that. Definitely doesn't get Quick Guard. And it'll probably do end up doing more damage on average than Murkrow. So, um, not really much to say about Talonflame. Everyone knows what it does. It hasn't changed since, like, Gen 6. It does the same thing every game. But it's really effective at what it does. And uh, any team any team that can get Priority Tailwind might as well, right? That's, that's a huge part of, uh, uh, like being able to win games consistently is going first. I definitely proved that last season with Noivern. So this is even better at setting up Tailwind than Noivern, so... Pretty good value, if you ask me. Uh, moving up next, I gotta do speed control on the other end of the spectrum. So I wanted to pick Slowking. I wanted to pick Slowking and pair it with Titan, but Braff picked Titan, so Slowbo Slowbro became better. Uh, this format is more biased towards physical attackers, so if I don't have the ability to run any kind of snow synergy, I'm just going to pick Slowbro because it's just better than Slowking in a vacuum. Slowbro is a great trick room setter and an abuser too. 100 special attack is pretty far above average in this format. It can deal some serious damage uh, if I run any kind of boosting item on it, especially considering that it has to run Hydro Pump now, so no... No little piddly damage with Scald. Oh, can I get the 30% burn? I'm going for Hydro Pump, hoping I hit. And uh, hopefully taking your mons out, because, I mean, Hydro Pump from Slowbro is probably about as strong as Draco Meteor from Noivern. And that picked up a lot of dubs last season, so, you know, it's uh, Noivern in a different flavor, again. Uh, also has the ability to, uh, what's it, is, is it Oblivious that blocks Taunt? It, it has one ability that blocks Taunt that the Galarian ones don't have, so that makes it better. So, uh, near guaranteed near guaranteed trick room sign me up and it's a nice recipient of that uh sweet gen one move pool it's like the opposite is uh goldingo this thing has every move it could ever want it has fire blast has earthquake has iron defense body press <laughs> you name it sliver has got it probably it's crazy so um pairing with this i wanted to fill out my uh fire water grass core which i found is a pretty solid strategy in uh in drafting typically so I picked what I think is probably the second or third best grass type around, and that's Serena. Picking Serena instantly makes my opponent's life harder. It has one of the best passive abilities in the game. It shows up on the field, no more priority, no fake out, no e-speeding Dragonite. If I pair this with Talonflame and Slowbro, I have like guaranteed uh, speed control. I honestly, I was thinking about it earlier today. If I if I lead with uh, Serena and Talonflame, I don't know if there's a way to stop my tailwind from going up you can't fake out you can't faint to break my uh uh gale wings or anything and nothing has faster priority than talon flame so i legitimately think it's unstoppable and it's not even like i'm running a, a baby mon to do this i'm not running bruxish uh and sarina has 120 attack which is in the top 80th percentile i get that turn one auto tailwind off i smack you with choice band uh power whip that's doing some damage grass is a pretty shit attacking type but i mean 120 base power 120 base attack choice band you're taking you're taking some serious damage it doesn't have as wide of a move pool as i uh, would have liked triple axle is <laughs> was so clutch for this mon uh, but it still has enough left over to get it done um and i really think that mons with these passive abilities like this are typically undervalued uh queenly majesty is probably one of the best ones uh storm drain is another great one i've made good use of gastron on the past stuff like that it just really goes a long way in draft makes your life a lot easier to not have to worry about this like i don't even have to lead this plus talent flame i have to lead the, i have to lead talent flame with serena on the team and it's no longer a, a free fake out it's no longer guaranteed it's so nice so um at this point i wanted to get some big beefy boys to uh deal some damage because i have slow bro i have talent flame i have serena kind of the fire water grass guaranteed speed control core so i wanted some miles to do lots of damage so I started off with getting a good Trick Room Mon because there weren't many left at this point. Like, 
it, I feel like in Sword and Shear there was a lot better Trick Room abusers, like right right off the bat when the game came out. You had Torkoal, you had Hatterin, you I mean, <laughs> they're both in the in this game too. Uh, but you had Dusclops, you had a bunch of other stuff. Maybe it's just, uh, you had Gigalith, stuff like that. So maybe it's just me remembering wrong, but I feel like there's just not nearly as many options for Trick Room in this game. But I picked one of the one of the better ones, I think. Um, I picked Frobobnimal, who is uh, the only one on this team that I've drafted before. And the only memory I have of this thing was just being super disappointed with how this performed. But uh, I, th I picked this in Season 2 of EBLN, which was a National Dex format with Mega Evolution. So I don't know what I was expecting from this thing. Uh, in a format where, like, it has... There was a match where I was uh, I was going through the replays to, to try to... Because I remember this thing is just missing ice hammers left and right and me losing games because of it. Turns out that only happened once that I could find. But I just remember being let down consistently by this thing, either in-game or in the builder. Like, I remember bringing it to a match against Mega Salamence. And I had to go, like, max special defense, assault vest, just to try to live a, uh, a spread hyper voice. Like... What was I don't know why I was thinking that was Karamdable season, but it, it sure as shit wasn't. But this season, this is the one for Karamdable. It's got decent defenses. It's got that nice uh, HP stat. Obviously, Spadef could probably be a bit higher. It is definitely below average. Uh, for defenses, the average is 82%. Or, not 82%. Uh, like, an effective stat of 82. So, it's a little frail on the special side, but it makes up for it. It's got that crazy 132 attack, it's got incredible moves, close combat, ice hammer, crab hammer. This thing can finally be the water type that it was meant to be all these years later. So, uh, yeah. Look forward to my, uh, my second water type. Uh, last up, we have <laughs> the, the last good choice. I picked Haxorus. I don't know why this thing was 6 points. It is so good. And, I mean, I'm taking all Taze Mons. It has to work, right? 147 attack, 86 uh, defense. 67 spadef 97 speed that's crazy value for a six point mon this is the highest attack stat in the format with no drawbacks so palafin switch out slacking you have to jump through so many hoops to make that thing work but haxorus is just stacked right off the bat and it's almost as fast and it probably has a better move it has a better move pool than palafin probably has a better move pool than uh slacking so uh, it just really opens up the options for items that this thing can run clear amulet is an obvious one but if they don't have intimidate Choice ban, life form. This thing, this thing goes from getting clean two shots to Oko's. It's 147 attack is just absolutely insane. Uh, I was actually listening to another video about this the other day, but Haxorus just has so many options for uh, for coverage moves. If I need to muscle past something that can uh, like on paper check me, I can just Terra and <laughs> just build your own stab type of whatever I need to just get through anything. So uh, it doesn't have much in uh, like in the in uh, in terms of team support, but. Killing Mons is uh, supporting the rest of the team. So, uh, I want to take a step back here and just kind of talk about where what I was doing when I was doing this draft. This draft took a couple days, so naturally, I was at doing different things when I was drafting. Uh, it just so happens that my last three picks, I was at a family reunion, and uh, I may or may not have had a little bit to drink. So, I uh, threw caution to the wind and picked the Dunsparce right next. Uh, this thing, <laughs> I love this thing. I've always loved Dunsparce, always one of the believers, always thought it should have an evolution. And when I uh, saw that it had an evolution that was just Dunsparce stapled to at the back of another one, oh, I can't tell you how overjoyed I was, man. This thing is a dream come true. <laughs> uh, it actually has really good stats if you look at it. 100 attack, 114 defense, 105 spadef, all that's above average. The effective base fat total super high. And I even talked about this in my little, uh, my little draft video earlier. It has Tailwind, so I have three Tailwind setters now. You can't, you can't stop all of them. I'll eventually get my speed control up. <laughs> and it just has so many possible options to take advantage of uh, speed control, or it can play the long game too. It could just do a lot of stuff. I mean, look, Tailwind, Roost, Coil, Calm Mind, Serene Grace, Glare, Boom Burst, Hyper Drill. So I can do all sorts of shit with the Dunsparce. You see it on Team Preview. That doesn't tell you anything about it, what it's going to do. Uh, in terms of terrestrializing, couldn't tell you. We'll uh, we'll think of that on the fly. We'll figure it out. But on the whole, this thing is just pretty solid. I picking mons with good stats is a good strategy, and I think this will get me there. So my second to last pick was Vigoroth, <laughs> the classic double normal pick on the wheel. Um, very little defensive synergy. Actually, what you call zero defensive synergy. But Vigoroth is a damn good mon, if you ask me. 
It has Encore. It can run a Violite. It can be a Fairy type. That sounds like a top three mon to me. And look at the rest of the stats. That's pretty good. If you factor in the Violite, 133 Defense or 93 Spit F, hey, those are pretty good stats. Faster than uh, most mons. 80 attack is below average, but we make it work. And it just has the move pool and the, the bulk with the Violite to really be a pain in the ass. It has reliable healing too, which is super big. That's what I was really wanting for in a cheapo point uh, uh, kind of mon. A way to be slow, or not be slow. A way to support the team, not immediately threatening, but can boost up over time, can heal itself. And uh, I think Vigoroth might be the mon for that. So uh, I have another pick here. Uh, we're not going to talk about uh, Special Agent Spide Ops. So when you look at the team overall, here's what we got. A solid 11, well, a solid 10 mons, I think. Uh, Spide Ops is also there. So things that I really like about my team this season, I think I have great speed control. I don't know how I picked it up just three picks in a row, but Talonflame, Slowbro, and Serena are so good at guaranteeing that I'm playing in the mode that I want to play. I have ways to take advantage of both modes. I have near guaranteed ways to set them up. And I have Powerhouse on both sides of the spectrum. Obviously, my team's super physically biased. Look at that down there. Not average attack in 99, average special attack of 72. But having Golden Go and Slowbro on the team, being five, and even to Dunsparce, I'll say. I'll, I'll throw to Dunsparce a bone. It could be a special attacker. That has enough pressure on both sides for you to realistically have to consider both sides. I mean, like, everyone's going to prepare for uh, Make It Rain. You have to. Otherwise, that's just, like, two or three turns, all four mons are dead. So you have to respect Golden Go. You have to respect Crabomnable, Haxorus, all that other crazy shit on the physical side. Um, and my type charts, like, in, I don't know. My type chart's okay. It's definitely fixable. That's what Terrasalization is for. This is probably the least valuable the type chart has ever been. Especially considering I totally fucked it up with the last three picks. <laughs> Getting two normal types and a bug type definitely makes any type chart look a lot worse. Uh, but things I... The only things I really don't like about my team are just the fact that I don't have a fake out mon. There's a couple left on the board. I really want to take a ton. I was going to pick that round two, but considering that went pick one, I had no shot in hell of that. Um, so maybe maybe we'll do some free agent moves. Maybe we'll pick up a fake out mon. Who knows? I like my team. There's nothing I really want to drop, so I'm not so sure how much I value that. Especially considering I have Serena myself, so I don't need I don't need fake out to combat other fake out mons. I could just bring that in the back and threaten to switch in whenever to protect myself. Um, what else do I got? Uh, not, not too big a fan of the physical bias, but that's kind of inevitable. I also am not really a big fan of that big speed gap between Talonflame and Haxorus. Pretty much, EV your, EV your mons to go, uh, oh, fuck, I, there was the benchmark, I don't remember what it was, but, because I had an EV for that when I played Tay in the, in the grand finals. Just one point faster than 97, and you're pretty much good, because you're not outspeeding Talonflame, and just, if you can outspeed Haxorus, you're good to go. The only other kind of things I was worried about is just that I have no redirection, but, I've, I've had seasons with that redirection before. I'll be okay. And also just the two normal types. But again, this is probably the least valuable that typing has ever been. So that is the Season 8 Phoenix Suns draft. Hopefully it'll uh, take me to success. If not, hopefully I'll have a fun time using these cool new Gen 9 mods that I'm looking forward to. I uh, got a special place for uh, Golden Go, Flamigo, Garganackle, and Dadun Sparse. They are... <laughs> I mean... There's some of my favorite mons for Gen 9, so that's why I picked them. And uh, I'm just so happy that I could get them all. So, yeah, that's uh, that's about the team we got. So we'll start uh, actually playing games here in about two weeks. This is content week, so make sure to check out everybody else's team builders. And uh, we're recording the, uh, the old draft review later today, so check that out too. Uh, but that's all I got. I will see you in week one. Adios.